Thank you. That's me tough to follow. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so on behalf of the Pearl Chamber, we would like to present to you today a clock and then also a book of business cards. And in here you'll find um, a lot of, you know, helpful information. Some folks, if you ever need anything, call on us. We're happy to help you with anything we can. And, um, yeah. Oh, yes, sorry. And then at this time, what we'll do is we'll go around, everyone introduce themselves, and uh, once we get the, uh, once you get the mic, you can kind of tell us more about the business and what services y'all offer, okay? Uh, my name is Emily Phillips. I'm a realtor with Harvard Real Estate Group, and I'm also ambassador for the Pearl Chamber of Commerce. My name is Lindsay Dees. I'm with Hometown Magazines and County Executive. Brantley Knight with Trustmark Bank. Weena Watson, Research Logics, Marketing Research. Ron Morgan with Accutex. I'm Kathy Deer and I'm the director. Good morning. Thank you all for being here today on this most special day. How appropriate it is that we have the largest crowd at a seated meal in the history of the Muse Center today as we honor its namesake. When you count the volunteers who are assisting us today, most of them are still behind the scenes. We're proud to announce that we have over 900 people here today to show their love and support of Dr. Muse. I realize it's a little bit crowded, but what a testament to Dr. Muse and his far-reaching impact on people. Thanks to so many of you sponsors who graciously bought whole tables and then allowed us to seat some individual people there. Thank you very much. It is truly a great day, but I'll have to admit it's a little bit of a sad day for us at Heinz Community College. You know, I asked Dr. Muse when we were preparing his retirement events if there was anything he wanted or anything he did not want. Well, those of you who know Dr. Muse, he is so humble and never desires recognition, so it was somewhat difficult to even convince him that we needed to do an event. However, he did not take but one second to say, Jackie, I do not want a long program. So Dr. Muse, I cannot make you any promises, but we will try our best to adhere to that guideline. We do have a few surprises in store for him. He's already asked me why he could not have a program. It's because he doesn't need to know everything on that program. We are here to honor a legend, a gentleman who shows love and respect to all, to showcase the achievements of one of the state's most visionary educators and to celebrate the life of a public servant that has scanned 90 years. What do you really say about Dr. Clyde Muse? As one who has been able to learn under his example for 41 years and has benefited greatly from his influence in my life, I could speak volumes and still not adequately cover what I really want to say about him. Those who have been blessed to work with him have all learned from his wisdom, his kind ways, and his true servant heart. Since December, when Dr. Muse announced his retirement, many people have sent him well wishes. You have seen a few of those on the screen today. There was an overwhelming theme to the words used. Servant leader, gentleman, kind, loving. You know, as I read those, I thought, those words sound so familiar. Well, of course they do. They're in the Bible in Galatians 5, where Jesus is discussing the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. 
It also says, let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another or envying one another. To me, those words describe the man that we are here today to honor. His dad wanted him to be a preacher, but I truly believe he has touched more lives for God's glory in the role he chose. Dr. Muse, although you are retiring, your influence lives on through each of us who has been touched by your general loving spirit. Thank you for giving so many of us a chance, and thank you for believing in us, supporting us, and more importantly, loving us. I want to point out just a couple of items, and then we will move on with our program. You will note a great deal of purple. Today, we are missing Mrs. Dr. Muse's greatest fan and the love of his life, Vastai. We use the purple, her favorite color, to show our love and respect for her. She is missed by all of us, and especially Dr. Muse, as she was his mate for 57 years. You might also find the centerpieces a little different than your normal luncheon decor. Well, we are honoring a unique man, a man who loves gardening and is known for his outstanding vegetables that he grows and generously shares with all of us. He's also known for riding his tractor around Raymond and tilling up gardens for anybody that will let him. We will follow the program as printed. You will note there are brief introductions of each presenter in your program. We want to thank Dallas Printing for donating the printing of many of our items, a great partner with Heinz and a special friend of Dr. Muse's. So sit back and let us honor a true living legend. At this time, I want to welcome for comments and our invocation one of Dr. Muse's closest friends, Dr. William Lewis. Thank you. Well, Clyde, you drew quite a crowd here today. And I want you to know that I sincerely appreciate the opportunity to participate in this event, honoring the legacy of my friend, my colleague, and my mentor, Clyde Muse. It is most pleasing to have been presented with this opportunity to honor Dr. Muse. When I was invited to speak, I was and am humbled at the privilege that has been afforded to me. Soon after receiving the invitation to speak at this event, I began to formulate my thoughts on how I could best honor this great man who has achieved so much in his lifetime. It soon became clear, however, that this indeed might become an overwhelming task. There's so much to say so many stories to be told, but so little time to give him the honor that he truly deserves. As you begin to assemble all of the descriptors that would aptly depict the lifetime accomplishments of this man, it becomes abundantly clear that there were many paths that this presentation could take. Clyde Muse, the longest serving community college president in the history of our state, 42 years the longest serving member of the Mississippi State Retirement System, 68 years, alumnus of the year at East Central Community College, Delta State University and Mississippi State University's College of Education, inducted into the East Central Community College and Delta State University Sports Halls of Fame, honored with the prestigious Winter Reed Medallion by the Mississippi Association of Partners in Education, and so many national awards, including the Southern Region Chief Executive Officer Award by the Association of Community College Trustees, and the list goes on. It is needless to say that Dr. Muse is recognized as the elder statesman of education in our state. Perhaps more recognizable and more fitting is the moniker that David Cole labeled him with a number of years ago. That is, Clyde Muse is the godfather of education in our state. In my search for an appropriate description for Dr. Muse on this occasion, 
I kept returning to the saying made famous by President Theodore Roosevelt, walk softly and carry a big stick. The part of President Roosevelt's quote that is often omitted is, and you shall go far. Walk softly, carry a big stick, and you shall go far. In my mind, no one in my lifetime has so perfectly fit this manifesto more than Clyde Muse. He is a gentle person and a gentle man who has the attention of everyone when he speaks. Former Etiwama Community College President Mike Eaton at a recent gathering of former presidents described it like this. When he talked, the others stopped talking. He speaks with such a gentle voice, but with such a big impact. Clyde Muse arrived on the East Central Junior College campus in the late 1940s, about the time America was beginning to climb out of the scars left by World War II. Times had been tough for him and his siblings. Living in rural Scott County, Mississippi, in a family that produced two college presidents, he learned the value of hard work and doing without. He arrived at the college in Decatur with little in the way of material possessions. He brought with him, however, a burning desire for a higher education and to play college basketball. He brought with him also the nickname, the Sebastopol Flash, because of his prowess on the basketball court now. With few resources to help him fulfill his dreams, but with the assistance of his high school principal, Leo Burns, he sought help from the college president, Dr. L. O. Todd. When he knocked on Dr. Todd's office door, he found a receptive but stern response for, to his plea for a pathway to the financial means needed for him to remain in school. When asked by Dr. Todd, how much money do you have? His reply was, I don't have any money. The reply from Dr. Todd was, well, that may be a problem. I'll have to do some digging to see what we can do. Come back and see me next week. From the tone of the conversation, Clyde was not optimistic about his chances for financial support to continue his college studies and basketball career. When he arrived at the president's office door the next week, he was greeted with a friendly smile and a surprising offer. Dr. Todd asked if he was willing to work for his key. Of course, was the reply. Then came the offer. If he was willing to milk the cows owned by the college at 5 a.m. and again in the afternoon and wash dishes in the college cafeteria, his college expenses would be taken care of. And by the way, he would milk the cows seven days a week. With a grin on his face, Clyde surprised Dr. Todd by accepting the offer. His reply was, well, Dr. Todd, that is right down my alley. I've been doing that all the days of my life. And so Clyde's entree into college life began with a simple path, complete with a lifelong lesson of working for what you get, working when others are sleeping, and sacrificing to fulfill a dream. The lessons he learned from the beginnings in the crowded household of a holiness preacher in rural Mississippi during the Great Depression left a great longing in him to do what it takes to succeed. First and foremost, that was that education was the key to the life goals he set for himself. Secondly, his father's preaching enamored in him the concept of serving others. Jesus was a server and Clyde was encouraged to emulate his teachings. The passage from the 20th chapter of Matthew where Jesus says to his disciples as they were questioning a decision that he had made, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served but to serve, was emboldened in his heart at an early age and practiced throughout his life. These two concepts served as the foundation for a life well lived and a career unmatched in our times. Clyde went on to have a great athletic career at East Central and Delta State. Following graduation, his leadership skills were finely tuned as he coached Canton and Starkville High Schools to numerous championships, including a state championship at Starkville. Recognizing his numerous leadership skills, he was moved into leadership positions as high school principal and assistant superintendent at Starkville. 
It was also in Starkville where he made two of the most impactful moves of his career. One outcome was not so positive, and one had a worldwide positive impact. While he was enjoying great success as a high school basketball coach, he was also required to help coach the football team. Part of his duties included scouting on Friday nights the opposing team for the next game. The head coach was a man named Jack Nix, who had been also been quite successful. When Clyde went to scout this one particular team, he determined that the quarterback did not appear to be particularly skilled, a particularly skilled passer and included those comments in his scouting report. So, Coach Nix did not prepare for a passing attack. The quarterback promptly threw four touchdown passes that Friday night. Nix asked Clyde after the game, what game did you go see last week? Enough said, that was the end of his football coaching career. <laughs> On a much more positive note, while working a summer job at the Starville Parks and Recreations Department, he came up with the idea to invent what is now known as T-ball. Yes, Clyde Muse is the inventor of T-ball, the game that is played internationally by hundreds of thousands of children each year. He was recently honored by the Mississippi Legislature for the, this most significant but little known accomplishment. His career path continued to grow as he was appointed superintendent for the Hines County Schools and led that system, the second largest in the state at that time, through the desegregation of its schools. He later was appointed superintendent for the Meridian School District in 1971 and then was elected by Hines Community College in 1978 as its sixth president. Even though I knew Dr. Muse by reputation in the, community, uh, in the education community, my first personal contact with him came in June of 2000. I had just been appointed as president at Pearl River Community College, and the Mississippi Association of Community College Presidents was meeting in Hattiesburg. I was not to begin my duties as at the college until July 1st, but former PRCC president, Dr. Ted Alexander, invited me to attend the meeting. Now, the June meeting of the association each year is focused on developing a legislative agenda for the colleges for the next session of the Mississippi legislature. It is time when many leaders from throughout state government come and make pres presentations to the presidents about their goals and action plans for the coming year. The presidents then take that information and formulate a legislative agenda for all of the community colleges. The plan that is developed is subsequently presented to the Community College Faculty Association, the Community College Trustees Association for their review and approval. As the legislative chairman for the President's Association for some 30 years, Dr. Muse has led these discussions and the entire process. It's ne it is needless to say that I approached that first meeting with the other presidents as most wide-eyed first-year presidents normally do. I was enamored with the process, the intellect and enthusiasm that was in the room, and the shared decision-making process that was ongoing. It was apparent from that first meeting, however, that the elephant in the room was Clyde Muse. He was cordial and supportive of all opinions, but it was obvious that he was the central figure in the room. I marveled over the years at his ability to organize that legislative agenda, to get buy-in from all of the constituents and to present a united voice to the legislature. On several occasions over the years, Dr. Muse had been invited by community college associations and other states to school them on how this process is accomplished in our state as a unified, unified effort of all the colleges. It is obvious that other states do not enjoy, enjoy the same esprit de corps that the Mississippi colleges have enjoyed over the years. All of this was made possible by the leadership skills of Dr. Clyde Muse. And what was the gain in all of this? On several occasions in the past decade, the Mississippi Community Colleges have been named the number one statewide system in America by the Rockefeller Foundation. 
His ability to frame issues and to organize plans of action to get the buy-in from all constituents and to develop the trust of the legislative leadership and governor was ra rather remarkable. Particular note should be made of his ability to find a course of action that would fit the needs of all the colleges, both large and small. He was as fair-minded as a person could be. Former Executive Director of the Mississippi Association of Community and Junior Colleges, Dr. Wayne Stonecipher, said recently, Dr. Muse was always there to take care of the small colleges. One final trait that I've always admired in Dr. Muse, as was previously mentioned, is his commitment to servant leadership. His first commitment was always to the student and how he could provide educational services that would enhance and improve their lives. He was focused on working to ensure that all Mississippians could have the opportunity for a quality, affordable, and accessible higher education. Equally important to him were his employees. He was always concerned that the Heinz workplace was a place where all people could find opportunity. He was concerned about them as individuals, and the, uh, and the stories are numerous about the, num num uh, about the number of people whose lives he helped improve, often through his own personal attention and support. He was never concerned about race, color, or creed. He was there to serve. In closing, there is so much more to say, but time is limited, and most of you here today already know most, if not all, of the accolades that I could pour out. I can say from my own personal viewpoint that I have never experienced another leader with the talents, vision, and servant's heart that I found in my friendship with Clyde Muse. He is a leader for the generations whose impact on all of education has truly made a difference for the people of our state. His influence has been enormous and his impact unmatched. I believe that history will mark him as a leader who has truly walked softly and carried a big stick. His faithfulness to this creed has certainly carried him far. Thank you. Now, if you will, bow with me, and I will bless our food. Father, we are here in honor of your servant, Clyde Muse, who has been such a blessing to all of us. We ask your continued blessings on him and his family. May his lifetime of good works continue to serve your purposes far into the future. We ask now that you would bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies, and each of us to your service. For it is in the name, precious name of Jesus Christ that we ask these things be done. Amen. Now it is my honor to introduce to you another of Dr. Muse's most closest friends and his colleague, Dr. David Cole. It may be afternoon, so good afternoon to everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here to honor Dr. Muse, as I am sure it is for you also. I am Dr. Muse's best friend. <laughs> but there's, a, there's 770 people in this room who who are also Dr. Mew's best friend. So it's a grand occasion and it's a grand day. As was noted in the book and as William Lewis noted, um, I was credited with coining the phrase, the Godfather. I wanna give you a little background. My first uh, 20 years was as a school superintendent and in that capacity, I was the legislative chair for the Mississippi Superintendents Association, which put me in the capital a good bit. I noticed this very tall, distinguished gentleman that people would gravitate to, legislators, 
while I was standing in the corner feeling like a pair of brown shoes on a black tuxedo. And then I would notice when it was time to go to lunch, there was a large uh, entourage that would go to lunch with him. And I'm thinking, this guy's got something going. And so when I became a community college president, everything that William Lewis said, I was going to say, he was the man. And we all knew that. And we kind of would spout off at the meetings around that table what we thought. And then at the end, Dr. Muse would tell us the direction we were going to go. So I coined the phrase, the Godfather, and it seemed so appropriate to everyone but Miss Vastai. She told me, David, I don't know if I like that. And I said, well, Miss Vastai, it is a term of endearment. She said, well, explain that to me. And I said, well, you got several definitions. A man who sponsors a child at baptism, uh, a powerful leader, especially of the mafia, and a person who is regarded as the originator or principal shaper of a movement, or any, any form, a person of great influence. And I said, actually, I'm choosing the man of great influence and not that powerful mafia figure, but in the back of my mind, I thought, you know, that might work too. <laughs> She said, all right, I'm going to let you continue this, but if I find that this is not what I am expecting to be, uh, I, you're going to retract everything. I said, yes, ma'am. And so that's how it all happened, and Miss Vastai gave it her seal of approval, and governors and lieutenant governors and speakers and legislators and educators throughout the state of Mississippi and beyond affectionately re refer to the Godfather as the Godfather of which he is. I was in his office recently. We were talking and we came around to leadership and he gave me the parable in the Bible where the disciples were arguing which one was the greatest. And when Jesus arrived, they said, Jesus, tell us, which of the disciples is the greatest? And the answer was, the one that is the greatest servant is the greatest leader. And that has been Dr. Mew's mantra his whole life. And that's why it's listed in the book that he is a great leader and is a great servant. So there are a few other people that he has crossed paths with down through the years that he has nurtured and tutored and led. And they wanted to do a little video recognition of him. So let's test and see how the, how the technology is going to work. And if you would, watch the screen. I have to admit that I was saddened to hear that a Mississippi legend like Dr. Muse would be retiring. Serving 68 years in public education in our great state, you are an institution in and of yourself. There are literally thousands of Mississippians whose futures are brighter having had you there to guide them. He started a process for reaching out to people who did not want to have a degree or couldn't afford to have a degree, had other talents that didn't require a degree, and he, he brought those people the opportunity to be a nurse or, or whatever they wanted to be. Throughout the years, whether it was state auditor, lieutenant governor, or as governor, I've always looked to Dr. Muse for leadership. 
He could navigate, even when there were differences of opinion, strong differences of opinion, he never let that interfere with his purpose of building Hines Community College and a community college system in Mississippi. Not looking so much about what divides us, but what brings us together. And I think Clyde Muse is the absolute best at that of anyone I've ever met. Dr. Muse was already, in the 1970s, a very big figure in Mississippi education, but in Mississippi politics, too. But he was still always friendly and warm and uh, not only interesting, but interested. He was interested in what was going on because he understood the power of politics in all the education system because it's where a big chunk of the money comes from. One thing that I remember is that all the community college presidents were very principled people, they were passionate people, they definitely believed in what they were doing. They felt strong about the mission of the community colleges and all kind of made up a disparate group until Dr. Muse used his glue, used his vision, used his background to bring together the other presidents to become the political force in Mississippi that it became. I had an opportunity to work with Dr. Muse and there was instant respect because he is so well known and so respected by so many people. He gets things done. He is such a tremendous advocate for education, public education, and especially community and junior colleges. And what a tremendous leader, what a tremendous public servant, but more importantly, I feel very blessed to call Dr. Clyde Muse my friend. He's a little hard to get to know because he has such a limited vocabulary. He didn't understand what no meant. So <laughs> he was great fun to work with, always a gentleman, always a professional, and always uh, with the best interest of his students and the people he served at art. Well, when I was governor, um, one of the things that I, I wanted to do was to make education more available, was to make particularly the community college system broader, more inclusive, and to reach more Mississippians. And the first person I reached out to was Clyde Hughes. And he very willingly gave up his time, gave up his expertise, helped me figure this out. And without him, and I know I'm not the only governor that, um, that he did that for, he wanted to make things better for Mississippi. Dr. Muse and I have, have met many, many times talking about not only what is in the best interest of Heinz Community College and what is in the best interest of the, the students that, that he serves uh, in this region of our state, but really talking about education policy uh, and what it means uh, to students all around Mississippi and ultimately students all around the globe. Dr. Muse has been friends of every political party from uh, and every race, color, creed, national origin, or religious background that I ever know of. He's one of those persons that transcends all of that. You know, it's, and that's a rare opportunity to have somebody to do that. Dr. Muse never saw political parties. He, he never saw regionalism. He, he never saw uh, race or, or gender. He, he saw people who were in the political arena uh, to be able to make a difference. And, and he gave them that respect. He, he was always one that, that would make you feel as if, whether you were in the legislature or, or the governor, he made you believe that you could make a difference, that, and Heinz Community College was gonna help you get there. Well, he is, you know, they call him Godfather, and for good reason. I mean, he is a larger than life figure in education in Mississippi. In our state, the community college system is very, very important. He was a problem solver. It was not a bunch of tomfoolery. Get to the point. Fred Smith, a Mississippian who is the CEO of FedEx, has a great expression. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And Clyde Muse is one of those guys that keeps the main thing the main thing. Watching Dr. Muse pull together different factions, different people with different ideas, and mail them into a focused uh, effort towards success, 
that was one thing that stood out with me, how he was able to pull people together of varying backgrounds to be focused on one mission. If you look in the dictionary under the term leader, I think it has his picture right beside it. He, he possesses the characteristics of true leadership. He emulates the goals of public service. He just connects with people. And he's done so much and he's accomplished so much and he's so well respected. He was a tremendous unifier. He never saw a party. Uh, he, he never, uh, uh, it never bothered him what side of a particular issue you were on. He was the same guy every time you saw him. He was just a, such a wonderful uh, conveyor of the, the message that he brought to the Capitol, whatever he was after. The other co community colleges and a lot of other people in the education system in general sought out Dr. Muse to be the messenger because they knew that everybody liked him. Well, I think that what Dr. Muse did was he kept the, the notion that his job was to protect and enhance the students of Mississippi. That his job was the education of generation after generation of Mississippians. That his job did not depend on partisanship, did not depend on politics. That he had a mission. Uh, I know that his dad was a minister and I think that uh, Dr. Muse has brought that missionary sense to this job, that this mission that he embarked upon was bigger than politics, was bigger than partisanship, and that if, if whoever was in the governor's office or whoever was in the legislature or whoever was in power in any capacity, if they had a sincere interest in helping the people of Mississippi in terms of the community college system and in terms of the broader educational system that he was happy to work with them. He is a legend in the area that Hines serves. He is a legend amongst community colleges. He is a legend in the Mississippi legislature because he has been fighting for educational improvements and educational outcomes uh, for many, many years. His influence you know, on so many thousands of lives really, though, doesn't stop here because we're, he's created the, the recipe for how we're going to grow in the future. His legacy will be the way we've structured everybody else to learn and those thousands of people who will now earn a meaningful skill. Uh, to go to work. That's where his real legacy will be. I just think Clyde Muse's impact on Mississippi will last uh, further than many public officials, further than governors or lieutenant governors. He's been there since the 1970s at Hines Community College. Think of the thousands upon thousands of lives that he, he would affect. It was all, not always about Hines. It was always to, for him, uh, important, critically important, to, that he was president of Heinz Community College. But he looked at the community college system and how it would help build the future of the state of Mississippi. So we now try to share uh, what's good about Mississippi and follow Dr. Muse's example. Well, he has a tremendous legacy in the community college system. It, it would not be the same system were it not for Clyde Muse. Everybody knows that. Everybody who's been involved in it, and whether governor, or legislator, or teacher, or, or student, that he made a gigantic impact and a positive impact. So I don't know what better legacy you could have than that. We have always struggled with our background of lack of educational uh, experience and attainment. Uh, Dr. Muse realized that the community college space was an important one in putting together or bringing together academics and practical education. It's been a great focus of academic achievement, but it has also been the workforce development that we've needed in Mississippi. His impact will be noted for a long time of what he did and how he spoke for and on behalf of community colleges. I think his legacy will show us the importance of working together and uh, just how important one person can make a difference in the state of Mississippi.
because he certainly, certainly has made and continues to make a very positive impact on our state. And I know that it certainly made a difference when Clyde Muse walked in that Capitol door. When he walked down the halls of the Capitol, there was instant respect because they knew he was there and he was gonna tell it to you like it was and it was gonna be something that would be extremely positive. And I just remember on many occasions when he would be there to advocate for a bill that was coming up, a piece of legislation that was gonna be coming up that day. And his presence alone made a tremendous impact on the outcome. A lot of legislators and people in government in general do go to Dr. Muse because he has such a wealth of experience. He's been doing this a very long time uh, and his, his judgment is valued by just about everybody in, in the process. He's the kind of individual who uh, chooses his words very carefully and most any situation you can name, he's already seen it already so he can offer your know, historic perspective of, of the time that you're going through or whatever the issues are. So, you know, that's, a, that's an amazing uh, length of time to work with children and work with parents and uh, God doesn't give everybody that talent. I don't think you can measure how big the impact that Clyde Muse has had, not only on this community college system, not only on the state of Mississippi, but on the United States of America, because the Mississippi Community College System has been chosen as the number one in the nation, and Clyde Muse is a huge, huge part of this, and you just can't underestimate the impact that he has had and the consistency that he has had and the longevity that he has had. If you put all those things together, the impact, there have been very few people, if any, who've had the same impact that Clyde Muse has had. Dr. Muse, your service uh, in the state of Mississippi is legendary. Uh, this is a retirement that you deserve because of what you have meant to so many Mississippians. Uh, we're gonna miss you, but I got a sneaking suspicion that you're not uh, gonna be gone forever. You're gonna be around, and I'm gonna get an opportunity to see you for years to come. I never think Dr. Muse is gonna retire. You know, when we were visiting the other day, uh, he may be retiring from a position at Heinz, but he's not leaving uh, our Mississippi society. And I can tell you, he can retire if he wants to, but I'm gonna keep calling him. Dr. Muse is my dear friend. Uh, you go through stages in life where you start with this authority figure. As I looked at Dr. Muse in the 1970s as I came back from the University of Southern Mississippi and, and thought, what this great man is doing at my alma mater, Heinz Community College. And then you, you become friends and, and, and peers and acquaintances. And, and then you become to care very deeply about your friends. And, and so I just want Dr. Muse to know how much he is loved. Uh, truly loved by all of us former students uh, by members of the legislature uh, and by governors who have looked to him for leadership. So Dr. Muse, just thank you for letting me uh, be a part of your life and being a part of mine. Well, Godfather, I never thought we'd see you retire. I thought I'd retire before you do, but uh, you will be missed, but not forgotten. Dr. Muse, uh, something tells me that 90 years is just not enough. The fact that you retired just to me does not mean that you will sit on the sidelines. And I wish you the very best in everything that you do. And I hope you take a little time to sit back and enjoy a lot of years, 68 years of service to the people of the state of Mississippi for a life well lived. Dr. Muse, I just want to thank you so much for your friendship. It has meant so much to me to call you a friend, to know that I could call on you and to have to have had the opportunity to work with you is a tremendous honor for me and one that I will cherish forever. And in your retirement, I wish you the very, very best. Uh, you deserve it. I hope that you have a tremendous opportunity to do things that you wanna do. Uh, you have given so much to our state. I wish you the best and please know that I wish you Godspeed in whatever you choose to do. I do wanna say how much I appreciate Dr. Muse's life's work. Uh, I looked up the definition of retirement this morning and it said withdrawal from one's present occupation or daily 
work. And, and I'm not sure that that's going to correctly describe this time in Dr. Muse's life. I don't believe he's going to withdraw from anything. Now, he may be moving on to another project. He may be moving on to some other goal he's trying to achieve, but he's not going to retire. And I wish him well whatever he does. There's a Navy saying that I think is really appropriate here. When somebody does something astoundingly good in the Navy, we put up two flags, Bravo Zulu. Bravo Zulu means well done. It doesn't happen very often that you put up the Bravo Zulu flags. The Clyde Muse, Bravo Zulu, an amazing career, helping Mississippi, helping just thousands and thousands and thousands of Mississippians have better lives. And I'll end with one last Navy saying that we tell everybody when they leave the Navy to go on to the next part, the next adventure in their lives. Fair winds and following seas. You have done exceedingly well, Clyde Muse. Bravo Zulu. Dr. Muse, there was one former governor due to health conditions could not be here, but he wrote a letter that he wanted to be read. What I consider to be the letter of all letters. I wish my book of letters, letter my, was a third of this. So let me read it. My friend Clyde Muse learned growing up in the hills of rural Benton County on the basketball courts of Sebastopol, Decatur, and Cleveland, and in classrooms and boardrooms throughout the state, helped to instill in him the qualities of fairness, courage, loyalty, and respect for others. It is these virtues which have served him well in his illustrious and remarkable career. From his amazing basketball career to his coaching fame, he has never wavered from those qualities he learned early on. His commitment and dedication to the education of Mississippi's young people is unparalleled as he has taught, coached, and mentored literally thousands of students. He is a beloved figure in the annals of history of education in this state. In 1952, then coach John Ray Hicks referred to Clyde Muse as a forward for the Delta State Statesman basketball team as an invaluable member of the squad as a reliable for his steadfastness, cons his consistency, and his leadership. Whether it has been on the hardwood in a science classroom as a school super, in the school superintendent's office as a church leader or college president. Countless people have relied on Clyde Muse for his steady leadership wise and wise intellect. He has been a loyal friend to Elise and me over the years, and we are proud to be able to salute him on this momentous day. At Delta State University's 2012 Spring Commencement Ceremony, Clyde Muse was awarded an honorary doctor of public service degree. This recognition, as it read, quote, is bestowed upon individuals who have made significant and estimable, estimable, the governor's putting a word in there for me that's hard for me to deal with, <laughs> contributions to the university, higher education in general, or areas of society, end quote. It went on to say his energy, enthusiasm, and dedication to the education of Mississippi citizens has not wavered. Clyde Muse is indeed a Mississippi treasure. Signed, former Governor William F. Winter. Your letter, Doctor. <clears throat> well, we have one other native son who wanted to send a special message uh, to the Godfather. And uh, his dad was from Benton County. 
and claims kindred spirit with you. So let's hear from our senator. Hello, I'm U.S. Senator Roger Wicker, wishing Dr. Clyde Muse congratulations on his retirement. I also bring good wishes to the Muse family from Judge Fred Wicker, my 95-year-old dad who grew up just across the ridge from the Muse boys in Benton County. Dr. Muse, I've known you for about 33 years. You and Daddy have known each other forever. You're both products of our public schools and of our junior college system, as it was called back in the day. And just like so many others of your generation, you are the embodiment of the American dream. Dr. Muse, I dare say that some public school teacher early in your life felt you would reach this pinnacle of achievement. Or maybe a perceptive principal somewhere in Mississippi saw potential in a country preacher's kid and imagined that he could have a stellar career in education. But even so, you have exceeded all expectations. You became the kind of educator who would work to inspire new generations of Mississippians over and over to reach their full potential. I also want to thank you for all your work on behalf of community colleges in Mississippi. I can attest from the first day your peers put you before the legislature or the Congress, you have been hard to ignore. You have helped to transform Mississippi's junior college system into a powerhouse that is developing the future workforce of our state. You can be proud of that legacy, and we are all proud of you. Stay close, Clyde, and enjoy your retirement. This is going to conclude most of my part. I've got one more little chore to do, but I think Jackie is going to start moving Dr. Muse towards the stage. And it was at this time I was supposed to kill some time with you while Dr. Muse makes his move. I will say this, um, the reason he uh, agreed to an occasion like this was not for him to be praised, but he wanted the Clyde Muse uh, Legacy Fund with the Heinz Foundation. You've heard about his humble beginnings and being able to go to East Central uh, by working his way through. Well, the proceeds from the tables and the seats go to the Heinz Community College Foundation specifically for students who were uh, challenged and did, does not ha did not have, well, will not have the money to go to college. And this fund is going to help them do that. So if you haven't given as much as you think you should have, uh, there will be people here that will take your check, your money order, your credit card, or your good faith that you will send it in. One of the things that uh, Dr. Muse, I think everything that needs to be said has been said by the governors, the lieutenant governors, uh, the former governors, the senator. William Lewis did a great job doing that. But the one thing that Dr. Muse had a trademark that most of you may not know about, he would, uh, when he needed you to take care of something, a bit to, to be on his team, he would walk up, get close to me, he's taller, and he would take that hand and drape it right over my shoulder. And he would say this phrase, now partner, and when he said partner, it was all over. <laughs> you know, but Dr. Muse is a legend. He is the godfather. He is the person who has been a shining light in Mississippi for a long, long time. And I agree with some of these uh, elected officials. This is not going to be the end or the swan song for Dr. Muse. God bless you, my friend. Thank you. It's now my pleasure
to introduce Mr. Paul Brazil, who has been on the board for 16 years, for several years has been chairman of the board of the trustees at Hines Community College, and he too is a great friend of Dr. Muse. Um, thank you for being here today. Um, you know, I, I need to disclose a couple of things uh, before I start. Uh, is that um, Clyde is from Sebastopol. You've heard that. And I'm from just up the road. That's my first disclosure. Second disclosure is we both went to East Central Community College. Uh, so we had two things in common. The third thing is... Uh, we don't have in common. He made all A's when he was there, and I didn't. Um, you know, I got a call, um, uh, and just looking at this as being a historical moment, I got a call about 15 years ago, and someone said, uh, we're going to appoint you to the board of Hines Community College. And uh, that kind of scared me to start with, and I thought about that. I said, this is a... A real historical thing in my life so I called Clyde up and I said I'm going to be a board member and uh, I'd like to sit down with you for a while and talk so I went out to his office and uh, I was thinking on the way out there uh, how blessed I was to be working with the master for a few years um, we talked about an hour and uh, I didn't take any notes with me, and uh, we got to the end, and I said, well, Clyde, you told me a lot of stuff. Uh, can you just boil it all down to one sentence? And he kind of reached up and grabbed his chin like he always does, and he looked at me, and he says, Paul, here it is. Uh, he said, around here, we always put the students first, and that's been the thing that's guided me since I've been associated with Clyde Muse. Um, he has done more for Mississippians than any other person that I know. So Clyde, thank you for 42 years of wonderful service to, to our state. Um, I was thinking a few minutes ago that thank you just doesn't seem like enough, uh, but that's really what I can say. I can say thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, and thank everybody here today for being here and bring, as David said, bringing your checkbook with you. We need the money. We always need the money. And uh, to give you an idea of Clyde's benevolence. Uh, the money we raise here today, which is in round numbers is going to be about $200,000, uh, is going to be helping Mississippians that aren't even born yet. So that money is going to be around for a long time. Uh, so Clyde, uh, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I want to give you a promise today and two gifts. Uh, let me give you the promise first promise is that we will always uh, do exactly like you said. We'll always put the students first. Uh, the second thing I want to give you is uh, to announce that the Board of Trustees has voted to make you the President Emeritus of Heinz Community College and that's a title that will go with you, with you for the rest of your life. And uh, <laughs> Uh, just keep your seat. Um, what emeritus means is um, he gets to represent Heinz Community College wherever he goes for as long as he lives. Uh, and he also gets a lot of other privileges, too, that go with this official designation. Um, the second thing I want to give you, I gave you the promise and the President Emeritus, and this is from the Board of Trustees also, um, is we want to give you your presidential medallion that you've used all these years. And we've had it framed, and here it is. You 
you know, we, when we had that frame, we put a little thing in the back so you can take it out because we know that you're going to be using it to continue to represent Heinz uh, forever. Um, so one promise and two gifts. You know, I was talking to Amy Tuck the other day, and she kind of took away some of my thunder uh, in her presentation. But she said when she had some tough legislation uh, in the Mississippi legislature that she would, and to, that related to community colleges, that she would call Clyde and ask him just to come and sit there. And his presence would cause good things to happen. So can you imagine someone saying that about you? That you're just being there is enough to cause good things to happen. So Clyde, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, thank you very much for your service. On behalf of the Mississippi, on behalf of East Central Community College, for everybody, we thank you very much for your service, and God bless you. Good afternoon. The state of Mississippi and the, all the counties of the communities involved in the five county Hines Community College District have benefited from the leadership of the last 42 years of Dr. Clyde Muse. The Rankin Campus is a testament to his vision. This building, which bears his name, has been a great asset to Rankin County and to central Mississippi. This building is used for a variety of purposes. I think it's most appropriate today that we, that the Heinz Community College Foundation has established the Muse Legacy Endowment Fund for the, since Dr. Muse started the foundation in 1978. This is an awesome thing that will be used from now on in his name, which will legacy from now on. The funds will be used for the things that his, his priorities through the years, for student scholarships, for faculty and staff recognition and community involvement. What a great day to carry on his name. We started out to raise $250,000, and this is our first event for this endowment. And we appreciate the ones that have donated we now have about two, two, fifty thousand, two hundred thousand dollars, fifty thousand short. If you would, in your folder, is in your card uh, books, is a card. If you'd like to contribute to this fund, the members of the foundation will be available at the welcome desk when when you leave. Dr. Muse, I can think of no better cataloging of ideas, no better expression of values which we might properly attach our motions to today, and to say, number one, you've been a great edu visionary educator, you've been an outstanding servant leader, and a longtime personal friend, and we say, proudly say, we thank you for your service. Thank you so much. A few people in the audience that I want to introduce before Dr. Muse comes up to make his remarks. First of all, I want to thank all of our governors and lieutenant governors who gave up their time to come do our filming. Would all of you please stand? Most are seated over here. Would you stand? Let's thank them for their service to our great state. We have many other legislators and other state officials here with us today. And Dr. Muse taught us well. He taught us you always recognize them. So would all of our legislators and state officials please stand and let us thank you for your service. Many are right in here throughout the whole place. Members of our Heinz Community College Board of Trustees are with us. Would you please stand and let us recognize you. They've had an easy job for 42 years. Now they're going to have a tough job finding who's going to replace Dr. Muse. 
We also have a number of our other community college, our IHL, our private institution, presidents from those colleges and universities that are scattered throughout the room. Would you please stand and let us thank you for the partnership that we enjoy with all of you, all of our community college, IHL, senior institution presidents. And probably the most, well, no doubt, the most important group here today is Dr. Muse's family. I would like to ask all of his family to stand. I know we have his three children here. We have grandchildren. We even have a great-grandchild. We have brothers, cousins, nieces, nephews. Would the entire Muse family please stand? And finally, you've heard many times that this is being sponsored by our Heinz Community College Foundation board. And our board gave up all the good seats to sit in the very back so that they could um, allow you to sit up front. So most of our board members are in the back. Would all of our foundation board members, current and past, please stand and let us thank you. Thank you all. Now, Dr. Muse, if you would like to make some brief comments, we will let you. No. We're glad to have the man of the hour, the man that we all love and appreciate, Dr. Clyde Muse. I love you. Thank you. They are going to be brief because I don't believe I can talk much after all the beautiful things that's been said about me. I know they're not all true, but I appreciate them anyway. I, I want to thank every one of you for being here on this day. It's a very special day for me one that I will cherish all of my life. It has been a wonderful journey starting out in 1952 at Canton High School. From there to Starkville, to Hines County, Meridian, and the Hines. A total of 68 years in which I've had the opportunity to serve others. And I think happy about the parable of the Good Samaritan. When the people would went passing by that person bleeding in the ditch and just went to the other side, didn't bother with him, didn't feel any compassion to that person. But here comes that hated Samaritan. What does he do? He had compassion, he goes over and helps bind up the wounds and take care of the person. You know, that's a wonderful example for all of us. We need to look for the hurt. We need to be a good listener to people because everybody needs a good listener. So I am here to tell you that I'm going to do a lot more listening than I do talking from now on. Thank you very much. Of honoring my mentor, my friend, and my coach, Clyde Muse. I don't know any man that influenced my life more than Clyde Muse. Coach, we've come a long way since Canton High School. You know, back when I was in high school, he wouldn't even let me hold my girlfriend's hand on a basketball trip. <laughs> and I couldn't understand that. But I owe a lot to this man, and he has meant an awful lot to my life. 
I'd like to express my thoughts about today. I wish there were more ways we could spend more time together and enjoy one another. Coach, I wish you the best of luck. And all I can say is, wherever life leads you, please let me be a part of your team. Coach Views, with all due respect to everyone here, not Dr. Views or the Godfather, you'll always be Coach Muse to me and the guys that played for you at Charlotte High School and the impact that you had on the lives of not only myself, but, but these other young men that played basketball for you at Charlotte High School. You not only taught us about the game of life, Coach, but you taught us how to play the game of basketball. Even though we failed you as sophomores winning the state championship, we did win it when we were seniors. You took a group of young guys to the state championship, and coach, a couple of these are here with me today. Car Smith, number 21, Larry Box, number 30. They're also here to encourage you and to let you know how much we appreciate what you've done for us and throughout the years. Coach, you remember how we've often talked about Vasta and how she washed our game clothes fed us, made sure that we even had some spending money to go to a little place called the Derby after the ball games. But more importantly, you and your family treated us as family, and we appreciate that. And for many of us, you were a father figure, and you lit a fire under us that continues today. You were definitely a shining light to all of the Yellow Jacket Nation, and we'll always love you, number 25. Dr. Clyde, they've given me one minute to share a 50-year lifetime of friendship. Years ago, you'll remember this, I uh, was a member of the, of the uh, school board, the Hines County School District, and uh, we needed a superintendent. Someone mentioned Clyde Moose's name, and uh, myself and a Mr. Whitfield, who was a, a joining uh, school board member got in our car and we drove to Starkville, to Starkville High School and offered Dr. Muse the superintendency of the Hines County School System. When he came there, he went to see every school in that district, talked with the administration and the teachers and uh, parents, and uh, came back and he told those people, he said, we're going to have a great school system here and I'm gonna lead it, and it's gonna be a, a, a new light that is shining. Let me say one more second, one more second. <clears throat> Dr. Muse is a godly man. I've seen that over 50 years. God has gifted him to, uh, through education, uh, lead many, many thousands of children uh, in the education field. Still trouble, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Muse came to Meridian, Mississippi at a very difficult time for public education. And unfortunately, I made it even more difficult for him because he hired me as a young band director five years out of the University of Southern Mississippi to be the band director of one of the largest band programs in the state of Mississippi. And thank goodness I didn't know very much, otherwise I wouldn't have taken the job. But not only did he hire me, but two years later, he hired my future wife. And Dr. Muse was not only an excellent superintendent, but he was an excellent matchmaker as well. In 1977, the band had been invited to play at the Music Educators National Conference in Atlanta, Georgia. And Dr. Muse decided he would fly over to listen to the band, just as he was always a part of everything in the public schools there in Meridian. The basketball team, the football team, every, the band, everything that, that went on. And so he flew over, and little did we know that his daughter was pregnant with his first grandchild. 
He had it timed perfectly so that he listened to the band. He greeted everyone at the end of the, at the, end of the concert. He got on the airplane and he flew home. And when he got to Meridian, the plane landed, and guess what? His first grandchild was born. And so, Dr. Muse, it's a pleasure to be here today with you. My wife and I are so proud to be a part of your retirement. Thank you so much. Dr. Muse, when I graduated from Vicksburg High School, and which is now a part of the Vicksburg Warren School District, and accepted a scholarship to play football at Heinz, I had no idea where my life would be profoundly impacted by you, the president of Heinz Community College, and also by an outstanding reading instructor. If it were not for you and your wife, I would not be where I am today, and I speak for many students who were just like me. Ms. Muse, whom I call mom, was my reading instructor who taught me much more than reading and grammar. She taught me how to look someone in the eye and be confident. It was her guidance that led me to believe that you can achieve anything and aim high. Ms. Muse's hard work paid off, therefore giving me the confidence I needed to not only finish at Heinz, but receive an undergraduate degree at Delta State University, a master's degree from Jackson State University, and accept the calling of ministering God's word. I can truly say she took me from a boy and developed me into a man. Because of her determination to see her student excel, and Dr. Muse, with your servant heart, you have saved many and given many a second chance to succeed in life. Dr. Muse, I thank you and Ms. Muse for sharing the light of Jesus Christ to all. Hello, my name is Dot Murphy. Uh, I am from Startwell. I've known Dr. Muse just about all my life and his family. And I asked Jackie if I could just say one, make one comment about what Dr. Muse has done through his lifetime promoting women in high positions. Dr. Muse hired the first vi female vice president, Dr. Jackie Granberry. Miss Jackie Granberry, I'm sorry, Jackie, uh, because he saw the potential in her. He then hired Dr. Colleen Hartfield, who has done a, a tremendous job. And Dr. Muse, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity many years ago when Coach Bill Buckner approached me about coaching football. Yeah, that's right, football. And I, as I was told, he went to Dr. Muse and he said, if it's who I think it is, I think she can do it. He never batted an eye. So ladies out there, this gentleman, this soft gentleman that was so competitive has been way ahead of times because he's been doing this all of his life. So for, from the women, Dr. Muse, thank you so much. We have heard from governors, colleagues, board presidents, former players, students, and friends. Although you've been called different names, Coach Muse, Mr. Muse, Clyde, the Godfather, and Dr. Muse, we all are blessed to call you our friend. We all share the same message. You have truly made a difference in our state, in education, and in the lives of countless people, not just in this room, not just in this state, but in the lives of people who have carried your light all over the country. Dr. Muse, you have made me and all of us better. Your intentions have never been self-serving. Your, life your life's work has always been about serving others. Now, Dr. Muse and I have a very special friendship a friendship that began on the opposite ends of a paddle at Starville High School. <laughs> and it did. And it has grown into a trusted, professional, and personal friendship that I treasure deeply. Today, Dr. Muse, we have reflected on your light, and we pledge that we will continue your legacy 
by reflecting the light to others that has shone so brightly in your life. If Dr. Muse has been a guiding light to you, please join me in expressing your love and appreciation to our friend, Dr. Muse.